Okay, good evening. My name is Pauline Wakeham. I'm an associate professor in the Department of English and Writing Studies. And on behalf of our department and the Interdisciplinary uh, Development Initiative in Indigenous Health and Wellbeing, I'm uh, very happy to welcome you tonight. Uh, so I would very much like to acknowledge that we're gathered here tonight on the beautiful land of the Haudenosaunee and Algonquin peoples, and more historically, the Adewandaran Nation. And I'd like to offer a special acknowledgement and welcome of our friends and neighbors, the Chippewa of the Thames, Oneida of the Thames, and Muncie Delaware Nations. To begin our, even, our evening, uh, we're honored to have Dan and Mary Lou Smoke offer an opening for us. Mary Lou is a member of the Ojibwe Nation Bear Clan, and Dan is a member of the Seneca Nation Kildeer Clan. They're traditional knowledge carriers who have become storytellers for their people, which they tell in ceremony, in print, and on radio and television through their program, Smoke Signals. Dan and Mary Lou are dedicated community leaders here in London who inspire so many. So thank you for helping us to begin our evening in a good way. Where I come from, when we greet one another, we say Bujo. So Bujo. Asanyanasque and Dejnakas, Makwa Dodem, Bachwana Bay Dunjba. Ready? Okay, for those of you who don't understand Canadian, I'm gonna say what I I'll tell you what I said. I said that my name is Shooting Star Woman, I'm Bear Clan, and I originally come from Bachwana Bay, Ontario, which is on beautiful Lake Superior, and I'm very honored to be here in this room introducing these women that traveled from Saskatchewan to come and share the things that they have done, they, like really spectacular things. Um, my husband and I have been in London since 1977. Uh, we came from Toronto so he could go to university and we just ended up hanging around the university so long that they hired us to start teaching. So we've been teaching a couple courses and um, we've been attending ceremonies and the reason why we were attracted to one another at the beginning of our relationship was the fact that we had each been in a sweat lodge. And in Toronto in the early 70s, nobody there had been in a sweat lodge. At that time, people were still suffering from when our ceremonies were outlawed. So in the 70s, you didn't see anybody walking around with smudge or holding a shell or having an eagle feather or carrying a drum. There was one big drum, a big men's drum, that was at the Native Center and um, you know the whole community would come out for that drumming and afterwards they go to the local watering hole which was at Spadina and College called the Silver Dollar Tavern. And so um, we came here you know, to learn more, um, to help to teach about our people. I remember when I was a little girl I said to my mom uh, when we were going to the church up in Batchwana, they had some kind of thing going on and I remember saying to her, what did the Indian people do 200 years ago? And my mom, she used to get so exasperated at me because I was always asking her strange questions. And she goes, oh, Mary Lou, you'll find out because I don't know what they did. So, you know, I eventually found out. I eventually traveled and uh, my husband and I traveled together and we've been to all kinds of places. And we've learned to sat with the elders. And so we absorbed that knowledge and now it's our turn to start sharing. So we come here to share um, a song, a prayer, and a few words. And I'd like to introduce my husband, Dan, Dan Smoke from Six Nations. Would you like to talk for a sec? Hi, where I come from, we say Sego. So Sego. Sego. Asan Yenis, Indishnikas, Kildare, Godom, Six Nations, Grand River Territory, in Jabai. Um, I'd just like to offer up an explanation for how we're going to begin this evening with this purification smudging ceremony. It's a ceremony that we do that helps us to remove, relieve ourselves of all the stress, all the worry, all the anxiety, all the dis distractions that we've encountered in our day to day. And we're left with our good minds and our good hearts. So we each have, we'll each take an opportunity to smudge ourselves, bless ourselves. And the way we do that is we wash our hands in the smoke and the smoke carries all that stress, all those distractions, up through the, the ceiling of this Conwyn Hall, up through the roof of this building, up to the sky world. Because as human beings, we're not equipped 
to carry around burdens like that. Those burdens will cause us to be unbalanced. So this is our way of taking care of that. We, we always take the opportunity to do that. So I'm going to ask our, our sister helper, uh, Maureen, to take this around to everybody. And she'll take it around, all the way around the room, so that anyone who wants to smudge themselves, purify themselves, and relieve themselves can do so. And so she'll take that around. And uh, Mary Lou and I will offer up a drum song, and then we will offer up a Thanksgiving address. These are the words that are said before all others whenever we gather, as we're going to gather here tonight, because we're in for a great message. We've met uh, both uh, Sylvia and Erica yesterday, and we had a, we, we had some we spent some got to spend some time with them, some very good quality time, and we got to know them a little bit about what what life is like out in the in the plains, and they both were talking about the the red maple, the beautiful red maple that we have in such abundance here in here in the east, and so. Um, the maple, in, in our way, is the principal tree of all the tree nations. The maple tree, because it's a, tr it's a tree, we call it the wata, which or a natik in Mary Lou's language, which is the tree that brings forth the sweet water. And the sweet water is the first medicine that comes from Mother Earth during the time of the thunder moon. And this wata is a medicine that's, uh, that's fortified with uh, many nutrients, minerals from Mother Earth. And we're supposed to drink a glass of it. In fact, I'd just like to acknowledge uh, our, our auntie, uh, Jan Longboat, who taught us this about uh, 23, 24 years ago at Project Indigenous in, at, in Toronto. Uh, our brother, Danny Beaton, had a big conference. And I remember hearing her talk about this, the, the Wata being uh, the first medicine that comes from Mother Earth. And we're to drink it, a glass of it, for a day. The sap, not the syrup. And we drink a glass of that sap per day for a month's period. And what that does is it fortifies our own blood with those same minerals. And then we take, we go, and then we're ready, our, when we become stronger, and we become more physically fortified so that we can go out and prepare the land and get the land ready for planting and for the seed, seeding of the land. And that will be our, that will, we will tend to that and that will become the harvest. So right now, we are now at that time of the season. This is the, in the cycle of creation where this harvest is, is upon us now. In our longhouses, in our lodges, we are conducting our harvest festivals, like a Thanksgiving. And we're doing that right now in our longhouses. In fact, they began today on the Oneonta Og, the Oneida Reserve, just outside of London. So I'm going to ask Mary Lou to introduce a song, a drum song, and we're going to sing this song to open up and open up the, uh, the, um, the spirit world to why we are gathered here, because we want the spirit world to witness what we are doing here. Miigwech, Dan. I'd like to say that um, all the songs that we sing are songs that we learned in the sweat lodge. So we went to ceremonies a lot to learn these songs. I remember the first time I was learning a song, I got home and I started writing, writing down all the, um, like the chorus, you know, it was all a, a lot of tra-la-la's, you know. And so a lot of tra-la-la's a couple days later and I couldn't figure out what it meant. So I had to keep going back to learn those songs. So um, we come to know a lot of different nations in those sweat lodges. And we learn uh, from many areas of uh, Turtle Island. And I think we would like to sing this song that's called the Megazee song. And this song is a song that we used to sing at Squirrel Wide Eyes Sweat in Moravian Town um, before he passed away. Uh, we went there every full moon. And this particular song, the Megazee song, um, my, my husband's cousin Cindy, her boyfriend was teaching us this song. And every week we women would gather in London here and we'd have a drum practice and so they would come in from Six Nations. So they were teaching us this song and we were just getting the chorus down and then they broke up. So Cindy kept coming to the drumming but her boyfriend didn't come back. So we didn't know the song. And then one night we were in the sweat lodge at Squirrels 
and we started humming a song, and then we put our own words to it. So um, this is uh, the song that we made, and it's um, no offense to anybody, but to honor Squirrel White Eye. And I know there's a couple people in the room who know how to sing this song, so please sing along. Way oh hey. Say an opening prayer. Chimi Merlu, that beautiful eagle song. Yes, and I'm going to start off in my language, the Seneca language, and I'm just going to share this Thanksgiving, which are the words that we say before all others, as we, as we indicated before. And we're just going to uh, remind ourselves where we sit in this sacred circle of life, life support system that we, we call creation. Yahweh, Sagwal Dizo, Miguetsky Jamnado, Bindige Mishonas, Senimio, Esquatahas, Kiko de Noir, Gohase, Jawise do Dakwa, Oskada Nagohas, Oida Tenahas. Grandfather, grandmother, hear our sacred thoughts, hear our sacred prayers as we bring our good intentions and our good minds into this Conran Hall here in the campus of the University of Western Ontario, here in the city of London, here on the traditional territory of the Adewandran neutral people. We bring our good minds and our good intentions to bear for the next while that we are going to be here to listen to our Cree sisters from the Treaty Four, Treaty Six area, and we are going to uh, be enthralled by their me their good message, their good words that they're going to share with us. So we want to give greetings and give thanks for this beautiful Wani Slio, this beautiful day that we've been blessed with to use in a in a good way, and it has been so beautiful today. We want to acknowledge all the life that lives in the water, all the life that lives in the water, the. Uh, swimmers, the finned ones, who are taking care of the water. The water is that feminine, sacred element of life that all creation needs in order to survive. And the water is still following her sacred instructions. She still provides life for all creation. Grandfather, grandmother, so be it in our minds. Mm -hmm. We give greetings, we give thanks to our Mother Earth, to all the life that lives in Mother Earth, all the life that lives on Mother Earth, the crawlers, the four-legged beings, the two-legged beings, us human beings, the rocks, the minerals, the plants, the medicines, the trees, all the life that lives in the trees and all the life that lives on the trees, 
form an interdependent, interrelated, interconnected life support system that continues to take care of our mother, the earth. Our mother, the earth, that feminine sacred element of life that all creation needs in order to survive is still following her sacred instructions. Grandfather, grandmother, so be it in our minds. We give greetings, we give thanks to our eldest brother, the sun. Our eldest brother, the sun, represents that sacred element of fire. And that sacred element of fire burns within every form of life. And as it burns within, our, we acknowledge that we are all related in, because of that sacred fire that burns within us. And our eldest brother begins his journey in the east. He travels across to the west. And along the way, he provides us with heat and with light, where he continues to follow his sacred instructions. Grandfather, grandmother, so be it in our minds. Mm -hmm. We give greetings, we give thanks to our Father Sky. Our Father Sky represents that sacred element of air. And our Father Sky continues to breathe life into all creation. And he continues to follow his sacred instructions. Grandfather, grandmother, so be it in our minds. Mm -hmm. We also acknowledge our grandmother moon. Our grandmother moon continues to look after all female life. And every 28 days, she shows her face and she blesses and purifies and recycles the water, the lifeblood of our mother, the earth. For she continues to follow her sacred instructions. Grandfather, grandmother, so be it in our minds. And right now at this moon time, as I said, the Harvest Festival is being acknowledged and celebrated in our longhouses, in our lo lodges, and in our roundhouses at this time. We give greetings, we give thanks for this Grandmother Moon who's doing this for us, helping us to remind, remind us. We also want to acknowledge our star relatives. The star relatives remind us when it is time for us to conduct our ceremonies of Thanksgiving. And we, we, we are reminded, and when they remind us, we acknowledge each of the ceremonies throughout the rhythm of creation that we must do in order to acknowledge our, uh, everything that we're grateful for and how the natural world and this life support system continues to take care of us. And we gather together in, in our longhouses, lodges, and our roundhouses. So we acknowledge our star relatives for they are still following their sacred instructions. Grandmother, grandfather, so be it in our minds. We give greetings, we give thanks to the, the thunderers the thunderers who arrived back in the, the thunder moon time around February, March. It was their job to wake up and shake up creation. It's their responsibility to let us know, let all creation know that the next cycle of creation is upon us. And at this time, we are acknowledging that our Mother Earth has provided this harvest for us, and we are celebrating that this time. So. The work of the thunder beings, the thunder people, is almost complete because it's their job to continue to bring the purifying rains that cleanse and purifies our mother, the earth, and which also give her a drink, which the, the thunder beings and the rains continue to do in following their sacred instructions, grandfather, grandmother, so be it in our mind. And lastly, we acknowledge the four protectors the four protectors are those four celestial beings who look after all spiritual matters. They, 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 they take care of us, and we acknowledge with these, these four protectors that the Creator, Saguayon Dizo, loves each and every one of you so much that he, she has brought all of us together to be with one another, to encourage one another, to support one another, because she loves us so much, and it's those four protectors who have brought us all here to be here in Conran Hall, Western University, City of London, on the Adewandran Neutral Territory. And so we acknowledge the Creator, the Saguayon Diso, for anything that we may have missed in our, in our recitation of this Thanksgiving. We ask that you uh, put that through and in your own hearts and minds. So in the spirit of our ancestors, we say, Chimigwech, Yahweh, 
Tapoy, Wilalan, Masicho, Haishka Siam, Palamaya, Wopla, Wopala, to all my relations, Daneko, hi hi. <laughs>